Hi there, it's Sam from poodlestock.co.uk. Thank you very much for joining me today. Today's project is this one. It's a laced bag with free stamping and free ribbon. How cute is that? Love it. It's laced up. I have had the complicated headache, so you don't have to. So I'm going to show you how to make it, but it's all been stamped with the, the beautiful, beautiful Peacock stamp set. Now this is free. With an order of 45 pounds or 60 euros, you can choose this or one of many other things for free. I love this. It's so gorgeous. <gasps> I'm gonna show you how to make it. Right, you need a piece of paper, a piece of cardstock, sorry, that is eight by 11 inches. Now, that means that whether you work in International A4 or North Americans, eight and a half by 11, you can make this bag. Our cardstock in the UK or internationally, is a little over eight inches, but a lot over 11 inches. Whereas it eight and a half by 11 goes up to 11 and goes up to eight and a half. So when you make it eight by 11, everybody can do it. Right, let's get my stamp going. Love this pattern. You can see how much I've used this stamp. So I think every single one of those has been stamped. Okay, in a block. So this is Smoky Slate. I used Sahara Sand for this one, but and Tone on Tone, but I fancied using Smoky Slate, partly because I, <gasps> shock horror, have run out of this ribbon. I have got a little bit on my roll, but not enough to do this. So I'm gonna be bringing in real red. So just randomly stamp all over your cardstock. Flip your stamp around so that you get different images, but I think most people are going to be focused on the lace or the laced up bit. It's a relatively simple bag. It's a shape I've made before. At least I think I have. I know I work with eight and a half, eight by 11 quite frequently, but whether I've actually gone ahead and done this paper pattern, this um, exact size before, I don't know. So, but yes, I wanted to show you what you can make with free stuff and Free stamps, free ribbons, love it. I kind of feel though that this needs a thin ribbon. So although there are two other, well, there's three ribbons in total in the free ribbon pack, I feel like the other two are just gonna be that little bit too fat and wide for what I, for this purpose, I think it's going to take away from the lacing. So I'm going with thin. Right, so that's all stamped. Okay, so <clears throat> the first thing we want to do is score on the short side and you need to decide what's going to be your top and bottom because the short side is going to give this part. So if you've got a bit that you like better or worse, make that your bottom and score at two inches, which is five centimetres on the short side and all that bit is going to get hidden away. Now on the long side, just bringing out my measurements, Score it fully from top to bottom at two inches, five and a quarter, seven and a quarter, and ten and a half inches. Don't worry about writing it all down, it's all on my blog, so click over the description bar, you can go straight to this project and watch this video with the instructions underneath. In metric, that's five, thirteen and a half, 18 and a half and 27. Now on our scoreboard, we've got measurements across the top and down at the side. And you want to hover your finger at about the five inch mark. So about 12 and a half centimeters down and score it at the one inch mark down to there. Okay, so it's not fully down. It's not all the way down, it stops there. And the same at the six and a quarter mark. So just roughly down to there and in metric that is two and a half centimeters and 16 centimeters that's the point you want to do that and then grab your ribbon because this is cardstock we want this nice this nice triangular finish here do grab your ruler and join up that point to there and there it'll if it's not making sense it will do when i've done it and i can show you so it doesn't have to be exact. If you really wanted it to be exact, you could measure down with a ruler and mark it up. But you know, it's handmade, it's not on a die cut machine. So there you go, you can see that now. That makes sense. 
brilliant we're going to put the score lines in then we're going to do punching and then we're going to do ribbon then we're going to stick it all together so fold up these score lines don't worry about the these part scores just yet we'll come to those in a bit okay so all scored so we're going to do some trimming now this is at the top just take a little bit away and then get rid of that long skinny rectangle and then cut straight up these I'm going to miter in very slightly so that you've got just a little gap between just makes a nicer sharper close and the same over here right so that's the box done you could put it together and you don't have to put the stitching but the stitching is beautiful this is the back this is the front we're going to turn it over to put our marks in so this panel here is going to come around and be the back so this is where we're stitching because obviously we want to stitch at the front so you do need a ruler and it doesn't matter whether you work on metric or imperial but just as long as you can get even marks in now this I, d I know is six inches tall so 15 centimeters make sure you divide and you can get six little marks in and I know that my my marks are going to come at every half an inch so that's going to be about one and a half centimeters but you need to play around first so I'm coming in roughly a quarter of an inch so that's my score line as you can see it there that's my score line and I'm coming in about a quarter of an inch or so again no science and I'm marking with my pen at the half inches so half an inch one and a half two and a half so not every half inch I don't want to have goodness knows how many but it's at the half inch mark so three and a half four and a half uh, five and a half so they're all marked in and I'm going to come and do the same over here and again just come in a little bit and mark it up uh, half an inch one and a half two and a half three and a half four and a half and five and a half can you see those so they're in a little way and we're going to punch now so I like this one. Oh, let's turn it over so I can see where my holes are and I've bent the cardstock so that I can punch both in one go. So it's done both parts in one go. And just punch your holes all the way along and the mistake I made, I did this part, no errors, no mistakes on this, it was all absolutely fine. Oh, here comes a thundering cat. There was no problem with that at all, although I've managed to wibble that one slightly. And I went and glued it at this point, <laughs> which was a really, really big mistake. Not sensible at all. I am going to stitch this one while it's still, un still unglued, still open. So, as I said before, a thin ribbon this is the real red solid ribbon that was part of the Christmas catalog and I would suggest use I mean this is gorgeous so you know let's just keep using it and if I get that to a point first it might make life easier for stitching purposes and I just, seriously you do not want to be making this when um, when it's glued together because you can't put your hands in anywhere it was a nightmare and what sort of length of ribbon do I want? Kind of that. This is going to be one of those videos where I chat because <laughs> it's not time consuming, it's you do kind of have to concentrate a bit. If I knew how to fast forward or speed up a video, I would. I might do one side pause and then come back. So we're going to lace it now. Oh, this is 
so much easier than the first time. <laughs> Seriously, I couldn't get my hand inside, or rather I could get my hand inside, but I couldn't, and I could poke the ribbon through from this side okay, but I couldn't from the inside. I, I haven't got a clue what I was doing. I was just blindly grabbing, much like I am now. And it was just, oh, it was a nightmare. And it was quite late in the evening as well. And I kept huffing and Chris was going, what are you doing? Why are you huffing? Stop making it. I'm like, no, it's going to be gorgeous when it's done. I've got to keep going. And it is. I think it's worth it. But yeah, I can see the inside of this. There's a cat launched herself up the blinds behind my studio. You would need to find somebody very special to give this box to, I think. Who would you give it to? I think I might make one of these and give them to my mum. She's very special. And my boys wouldn't appreciate it. And Chris would go, oh, yeah, that's nice. And keep going. So make sure you're going in the same direction because you want your pattern to flow. And it's gorgeous when it's done so at this point I think I'm going to pause and come back to you when I've almost finished because you know me and ribbon and fumbly fingers at the best of times because I can't see what I'm doing nobody wants to watch that so I will see you shortly okay so I am back it's all laced up. So you can see front and back pretty much the same. And what you end up with is this. You end up with four pieces of ribbon sticking out. Now mine are a bit longer on one side than the other, but not to worry too much. Now, when it's all glued together, kind of what do you do with these bits? Well, I'm gonna show you because I pulled it closed like this. So you need to get a couple of holes in the back, a couple of holes in the front. Again, I wouldn't stress too much about it being completely perfectly spot on accurate, but nice even placement either side usually works pretty well. So we'll just go in the middle. <laughs> it's not, I believe there is a fine line between handmade and homemade. Um, and there could be quite marked differences, but I equally think it's okay. Right, so now I can glue this together. So I'm gonna come back to that in a minute, all the ribbony parts. Adhesive down here. At the point in time we're filming, we've just had notice that Fast Fuse is not going to be carrying over into the main catalogue. So it's a Wild Stocks last thing. I hope we still have it at the point in time I'm filming because I really like this stuff. Okay, so that's the back. There's no lacing on there sides round and the back and then get some glue on here and bring it round so we now have this shape it will fold in because we've got these lovely score lines going give it a little bit of help and we've now got our holes so I took the ribbon that comes out that side and I took it through to the back of there. And the same with this one. And took that through to the back. Okay, so you're looking straight overhead. These ones came through from the back to the front. You can see the problem I was having when I stitched my original bag up while it was closed. Because <laughs> I can barely get these ones in. That's going to come through there. And the same with this one. That's going to pull through. And then we're going to do the same. This is going to come over and go through as well. But I need a little bit of help keeping it shut for a minute. So I'm going to grab my trusty peg there. Well, I bring that ribbon over and through. Oh. <laughs> I've just fired that at myself. Okay, we'll worry about the trusty peg in a minute just to get this ribbon over. 
If you don't have a trusty peg, you need four extra pairs of hands. No, you don't at all. I try not to make complicated things that require lots of extra hands. So peg is now on floor, so we'll use this. And I'll see if I can put it on. That's handy. So we'll have one of them too. I can't even see the peg. And simply, I'm just tugging to make sure it's all in place and then tie a bow. Probably should have done a knot first. Might have been useful. <laughs> It hurts, it's painful. Nice knot, then the bow. Neaten it all up. Assistance eggs off. Cut your ribbon so all pretty much an equal length and I love it. Oh, how cool is that? One laced up bag, so worth the extra effort of stitching it. It doesn't need the stitching to keep it closed, but I just think it's gorgeous. Oh, you could even swap and do your patterns going like that, couldn't you? Oh, I think I've unleashed all sorts. Anyway, thank you ever so much for joining me. Hope to speak to you very, very soon. Bye.